I want to say it was about it was thirty five hundred bucks. No, I, a package, and we got two packages. No, yeah. one for me, one for my girl. Right. My name is Philip Setter, and uh, the first company that I was in was a company called Lioness, which was like this. I think you know about it, but it's like this uh, this like cash back rewards card, which is so blatantly like if you actually look at if you like can objectively look at it and like see the compensation plan and like how they recruit and like how they sell things is so obviously a pyramid scheme when you actually like take a step back and look at it you're like oh my god what the fuck was i doing so so that was the first company that i was in and i was with them for maybe a year and a half um maybe a year and a half to two years and then basically i don't know what happened but i think they do this in mlms quite a bit is where they'll just like have some type of like comp change or some type of like change within the company whether it's like admin or from corporate and then like the the, the leaders like the upper echelon of the people there are basically like okay we're gonna leave now and we're gonna go to another opportunity so basically what happened was all of like the top people in line s and then are like hey we have this other amazing opportunity now that we're going to and that was um trinant uh, which was the okay. other company which uh, isn't, I guess, so clearly a pyramid scheme as Lioness, but I mean, it's still, I think I posted something in the Discord today. Someone had a question about Trinant, and it's just like, it's just a bunch, like, there's nothing of value in the company. Like, there's okay. no, it's just like, hey, here's a bunch of bullshit services for $150 a month, and go find three other people that also want to pay $150 a month, and then they can find three people that, you know, find $150 per month. Right. Um, but, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, of course. So I was with them, I think I was only with them for... Um, I think I was the fatigue of MLMs were starting to to come to me at that point. So I, I think I was only with them for maybe like six months or a year. Okay. Um, and then yeah, and then I it was no like there was no like you know dramatic like I quit. Fuck this place. It was just kind of like a phasing out. I left and you know parted ways and you know went on with my life and started the career that I do now. So right, okay. So and Lioness, you were with for how long? <laughs> like a year and a half. Okay. See, the funny yeah. thing about Lioness is I remember there's a there's a famous clip from the show. Dude. Dragons Den. Yeah. Where the guy goes on there and she tries to pitch the dragons on Lioness. And yeah. they get pretty pissed at him. Uh and actually Coffeezilla has a video, like it's a reaction video <laughs> to that Lioness pitch on Dragons Den. That that always shocked me. And I remember actually, you know, my first experience with MLM was my friend from high school joining World Financial yep. Group after we graduated. <laughs> but I remember when I saw that Lioness clip, I thought back and actually my actual first exposure to MLM before I even knew it was my dad's friend's wife tried to recruit me to Lioness when I was like 17 or 18. I was working for my dad at his business and he like brought me over to the Starbucks next door to talk to <laughs> his friend's wife, who I had known since I was a little kid, like family friend, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she promoted, rather she presented the Lioness plan to me. And I remember even when I was like 17, 18, asking her like very simple questions about like, okay, so the I get three people and then how did they get their money? <laughs> and even in that moment, she was like stumbling over her words and was like, okay, no, wait. Like I remember her specifically yeah. one moment. She was like, oh, no, wait. Like she didn't even understand. It's fucking impossible to understand. Yeah, yeah, I knew it was. You can't understand. Yeah, it's, I knew it was bullshit. It's bull. Yeah, so so yeah, a couple things on that. So like number one, that um Dragons Den video was out when I joined, wow. and I don't think I saw it until after I joined because I remember <laughs> then when I was like going to my like friends and like going down and be like, yo, this company's so sick. And then like it's so funny the the uh, the brainwashing and just like the mental fucking gymnastics they play around you right because like i'd be like hey what about this video right and then it would just be like like you were trained in this like well yeah but like a job is a pyramid scheme and a corporation's a pyramid scheme like the dragons just don't get it and so like even even watching that video at the time right you're you're so involved in that like community of people you know what i mean that it's it's so hard to to objectively think and i was like oh yeah yeah no the dragons don't know what they're talking about this is a legitimate opportunity <laughs> but you know what it is though you know what it is i actually thought yeah. about this quite a bit i think a large like a large portion or large structure of mlms rely upon either like a really close friend or a business associate or someone that you you inherently trust with you know what i mean 
because the reason that we all got like involved and by the way it wasn't just me it was like some other family members as well the first person to get in was my brother and my brother i'm assuming i've never talked to him about this but i'm assuming that he got in because someone that he respected in the business community was like which which actually i know for a fact there were several people that were respected in the business community that got him in and other people in so maybe it was that individual and he trusted them right because like they they've been in business for longer they know what they're talking about so he just inherently hey this is my good friend and they're in business and they're smarter than me. And so then he joined, right? And when he joined, then he came to the family and said, hey guys, I have this great opportunity. And he was, he's, he's been always doing much better than us, right? He's very successful. Even today, he's very successful. He's out of MLMs now and he's very successful. So we kind of just blindly believed him. And we were like, yeah, 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 this, this seems like a good opportunity. And then when things would come up like that, like the Dragon's Den episode or like other questions, you know, I'd be like, wait a second. I would go to him and be like, hey man, like, are you sure about this? Cause like when I start to do the math and I like try and think about it and like, you know what I mean? Like it, it, something doesn't make sense here. He'd be like, Oh, that's just cause you don't understand it, bro. Like, listen, this is, listen, you, this is how it works. Let me explain how it works. And da, 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 da. And it's not because of the fucking corporations or pyramid schemes too. And there's a CEO and blah, 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 all the same shit. Right. And so you're just like, like, even though you're questioning it internally, you're like, well, I trust him. I trust my brother. And then my brother's probably sitting there like, well, I trust this business colleague, you know what I mean? And then like, they're probably thinking the business colleague, the business person probably thinking like the next line up, like, well, I trust this person that got me in. So I think it's just this like line of trust that yes. the whole fucking lie is built yes. on. Like, and it's just like, no one is is actually thinking objectively. They're just blindly trusting the one person above them and the one person above right. them. Right, right. Well, that that is true. And that's sort of why, that's one of the very clever things about MLM. It's why... There's no recourse. Like, are you going to go back to your brother and like confront him when he was equally as misled by somebody yeah. else as you were by yeah. him? Yeah. MLM, I've said this before. MLM is the only scam where you can <laughs> scam somebody and then look them in the face in broad daylight and smile and yeah. go, Oh, well, I guess you just didn't work hard enough and nothing bad will happen to you. It's really uh, it's up, incredible. Dude. Yeah, it's really it's really incredible because they yep. figured out they figured out a perfect way. You know, it's such a scam, but it's not a gang, it's not a mafia, it's not a violent thing, and yet the victim impact is so much greater than any other type of scam that has ever existed. Yeah, totally. It's really just the yep. most cunning, the most cunning thing. That's why there's such a pipeline from your religious community to yep. MLM or from your family to MLM. And that's why once you're, you know, think about religion, you, you're not born believing something. You're taught, yep. right? Yep. If your parents were Christian, probably you're Christian. If your parents were Buddhist, probably you're Buddhist, etc. So no kid just woke up one day and became sentient and said, here's all the things that I believe. They were taught it. And in religion, you have to have faith. Faith is believing without seeing, believing without evidence. Yeah. And so if you already know that to be true in yeah. your religion, it's much easier to pitch somebody based on that when it comes to a business. Yeah. Business. Yeah. Cool, so, cool. Yeah. So tell me about they what was your person? Was that? <laughs> they sneak in there. They sneak you in there. Yeah. yeah they so sneak in there. So what was your personal investment like into Lioness? How did you, and then how much did you make? And what was the, what was the like net, you know? Yeah. So I think at the time it was me and, and uh, my partner. So my girlfriend at the time, and we both got suckered into this and we both went to like, it's all just like the, they do such a good job. And it wasn't, it really wasn't until I started watching your channel, maybe like six months ago. I think I watched the WFG video like a couple years ago, but then you started to crank up the content. It wasn't until then that like, cause I haven't really thought about it, right? Like I quit them, moved on my way, you know, and kind of went on. And it wasn't until I started watching your content that I started to like unravel all the shit. I'm like, oh yeah, those motherfuckers do that, right? Um, Yeah, so at the time it was me and uh, my partner and like, it, you know, it, it's like, there's always this like time urgency of everything, right? So he basically like sat us down and he's like, listen, we're building this team, okay? This team's gonna take off. This team's going to the fucking moon, okay? Like, we're gonna take over Alberta. And like, listen, you're either gonna be in a spot where you're making money or you're gonna make nothing. <laughs> and so we sat down. And that was like, that was the attitude though. That was the attitude with both Lioness and Trenant. Like when we went over Trenant, it was like, hey man, we're building a team. We gotta get you in at this spot. We're gonna get you in 
at the top, bro. And I'm like, well, that's like not the fucking top, but okay. So yeah. in Lioness, um, yeah, I think like, dude, I don't know what their structure is now, but at the time, basically how the compensation plan worked, which like is nearly impossible to explain because it's so fucking complicated, but they would give customers these little cashback cards, rewards cards. And then as they used them, it would collect points. And then these points would go into this like hierarchy of units. And then there was a number of points that were required to then cycle a unit. And then that unit would pay out and it would pay a percentage to different people that who had the units or something like that. Okay. So it was like little blocks that would cycle this in this, this sense. Right. And people essentially shopping would do that. But like the amount of people that would have to shop and use this fucking card, which was at the shittiest merchants ever. It was like little like hole in the wall, dungy places are like, Hey, would you put this program in place and accept this card? It's like the shittiest liquor store you've ever seen in your entire life. You would never go there. So how it worked is you're supposed to use this card and that would, you know, collect these points and cycle these units. But then they're like, but why wait for customers? You can just buy the units. And so that that is the the investment quote unquote. So then you would buy these units to then place yourself in a position to take advantage of the millions and millions of customers they claim to be able to get in the future, right? But then these units that you actually purchase with real money would then cycle the units of people above you. So they would start to get paid, right? And then more people would start to get paid. But the units, like the package, it was like a premium, uh, like premium gold, you know, fucking pot, like, you know what I mean? Like little little package that you got. I want to say it was about... It was thirty five hundred bucks. No, a, a package, and we got two packages. No, yes. one for me, one for my girlfriend. So, so what I, was in the package? Nothing. You just got units in this fucking system. And so that, wait, did the units translate to what percentage of cash back you got or points no, you got? No, okay, so no, no, nothing, the, nothing. Okay, so the, all the okay. Imagine there's okay. Imagine just like a pyramid scheme with like you know a circle at the top. Okay. But instead of a circle, it's a unit. And then the more people that would purchase things we using this card would collect points and the points would get to a certain number and then a unit would cycle, quote unquote. And when it cycled, it would pay you out a commission. However, it would take years, like it would take fucking hundred years for any of the units to cycle because no one uses this fucking card because it's a piece of shit card. So the way that they did it is they're like, oh, just like place yourself, position yourself now for eventually we're going to have millions of customers since so you want to have all these units ready to cycle from all the shopping of these people. Cause they would say, it'd be like put $3,500 in, but when it cycles, you'd get like 15 grand back or something like that. Right. But of course, if you think about it, that 15 grand is just built upon people under you buying more of those fucking units. Like, dude, like think about that. It's literally a pyramid I, scheme. Yeah. It literally is a pyramid scheme. So you would get nothing. So I still technically have, in in Lioness, I probably still have. I like I don't even know how to log in anymore. But I have these fucking units in their higher like little structure system of and like none of them have ever cycled. So, <laughs> man, see, this is so complex, dude. It, I know it behooves any regular person to try to understand this. My personal definition of MLM is a Ponzi scheme yeah. with extra steps. Because 100%. I'm familiar with cashback credit cards. It's very simple. If I use my credit card and I spend $100, I have a 1% cashback reward <laughs> with my credit card. So at the beginning of the next year, I will get $1 back because of that $100 purchase. That's yep. very simple to keep track yep. of. I can see my rewards balance anytime I log in onto my banking. If I have a balance of 300, that means, okay, that's 1% of 30,000. Okay, I get that. Easy. So yep. easy, easy, easy. This easy. whole thing about like, hey, you use the, you make the purchase and then you get points and the points translate to units and the amount of people under you, I'm sure factors into that somehow. I mean, it's like- Who fucking knows, dude? Who, 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 who understands? So no. so when you spent the 7,500, I mean, that's yeah. an absurd, sorry, 3,500 you said? 3,500 twice. So 3,500 twice. Yeah. So 3,500 is really <clears throat> an appalling number to me because- it's a lot of money. You, most MLMs try to make the buy-in like under 500 so that they can tell you, you know, this is a lot more affordable than trying to open a McDonald's franchise. They make these comparisons, right? It, yeah. It's like a franchise, <laughs> but it only costs you 500 instead of a million. So yep. the three, the 3,500 yeah. 
It's a lot. Dude. I'm guessing that was one of the bigger packages. Like there was there, no, packages. no, no, no. There, there, there was like from what I remember, and I, and keep in mind they've also changed this entire like structure and comp plan. I'm sure they changed it because like people were like, well, I'm not paying thirty five hundred dollars. So I think maybe they have smaller options now. But basically, back then it was like it was like almost nothing or the premium plan, right? And, and then it came like the funny thing is, is you get nothing like there's nothing of value, but they send you this fucking box, right? And it's just like a cardboard box. And I think they had like. I don't know what it was like maybe a certificate or maybe like some bullshit thing that just says like, Hey, you're a premium member, but there's nothing of value in it. So yeah. And it's dude, it's, it's wild. Like, and keep in mind, like, it wasn't like I was this rich 20 year old dude. Like that was my entire savings. Like that's, I'm pretty sure we yeah. took a loan we took a loan to get part of it. Right. Because we were hyped up in this opportunity. Like, Oh my God, we're going to, like, this is it. We're going to get, and like, that was back in my twenties, dude. So I, like, I, I was an electrician in my early twenties. I've quit that now when I was 24, I, I got out of that. But at the time I was looking for fucking anything. I would have been like, dude, if you have an ice cream shop, bro, I would have been, I would have joined and I would have been slinging vanilla cones on the street, bro. Like anything. Uh, oh, so when, man. when they came to me with this, I was like opportunity, a chance to get out of the trades. Fuck yeah. Let's do that. So, I mean, they could have came to me with anything and, and, but I like, dude, I was a broke 20 year old. I had no money. This was just like the chance for me to get out. And obviously it didn't, I mean, yeah, that did obviously didn't work. Out. Right. It's crazy. Like, cause we still lose so much here with MLMs and it's just, it's thrown under the rug. Like it's, we turn a blind eye to it and it's crazy. Like I'm talking regulators and like, at least, I mean, on the insurance side, like, I don't know if you saw that, but the uh, federal, what is it? The federal regulatory uh, authority of Ontario federal. Is that right? Okay. But basically like the, um, the body that regulates insurance in Ontario. I don't know if you saw this, but if you didn't, it's like, you should do a video on it, but basically they did a huge crackdown on uh, WFG, Greyway financial and exterior. And they basically said like improper selling practices, um, oh, yeah. improper products. Like there's a whole thing. Um, and I don't know. I think they find all three of them and they called for retraining of their staff, retraining. Like they want to look at like the compliance is coming down hard on them. Now that's specific to Ontario. However, it does set precedent for the rest of Canada to be like, yeah, these motherfuckers are doing shady shit. But you know what, dude, <laughs> it, it, long term, the way these companies get out of it is like, for example, WFG their official position on it would be, oh, those guys were not upholding our very high standard of ethics and they were the bad apples, but you know, we're going to, we're going to terminate them, but that's not what we, we don't stand for what they do. Well, I, that's I don't know though. Cause like a lot of it was their like W official WFG training and compliance documents. So oh, they yeah. didn't, they did an audit of W like not like a specific broker, okay, but they did an audit of the companies and they asked for, like they wanted to see, they, they went undercover and did like, um, uh, like sales training. They got sales training documents, presentations, they got official compliance documents. So, um, it's, it's a pretty, like, I just, if you just Google, you know, uh, I don't know, MLM insurance brokers under investigation, it's, it's a fairly large hit to them. So it's not going to be like, I'm sure they'll Good. get out of it. Like they'll just, you know, change some things, but they are like, let's put it this way. They're under the limelight now. Like people are looking at it and, and I mean, it's just fuel for us, but yeah. people are, people are looking at it now. Like it's, it, it's one thing if like a YouTuber like you or, or me just is like, oh yeah, WFG is a scam. It's another thing when the federal regulatory authority of Ontario says like, Hey, you guys are doing shady shit. Right. Well, it starts with people <laughs> being aware of it. So I think yeah. the YouTube stuff is probably the most important piece of the puzzle because yeah. people who work for the government, they watch YouTube as well. They watch <laughs> videos too, you know, and if, if yeah, they think they true. can, if they think they can, <clears throat> you know, justify keeping their job or do some, make some work out of it, then that's good. I'm happy to, to contribute yeah. to that. But yeah, I do 100%. think they probably will just restructure or change some things in order to to keep skating by but it is really yeah. insane to me that even in 2023 these things are still so prevalent like there's a nice neighborhood where i live in edmonton and there's a big world financial group building that says world financial group right in big letters and it's in a like popular area like there's an a and w and like a steakhouse in the same little strip and then a, a one minute drive away there's a primerica office and yeah. it's like damn <laughs> and, and actually actually I got to probably stay away from that neighborhood because that yeah. World Financial Group building is the one that I went into a couple of years ago. And then the Primerica office that I mentioned that's like a minute away from it is the one yep. that I went to in January for my Primerica infiltration. So I should probably just avoid that neighborhood altogether because I'll, I'll probably end up going into one of the restaurants around there and 
you know, somebody from one of those offices is probably going to be in there. You know, you think so? so. Probably, hey, yeah. like they're probably they they probably all know your face by now. I I know for a fact they know my face because I've had people who have messaged me and they joined one of those offices here in Edmonton and they show me that like there's a they'll show me a screenshot of like their internal Telegram group chat no, and they have pictures. Really? They send like pictures of me and really? like they talk about me in the presentations and say, oh, you guys seen this guy on YouTube? You know, people have told me. <laughs> so much stuff about what was said about me from people yeah. in the companies like they have insane rumors about me like i'm the boogeyman for, sure. for real i'm the boogeyman it's insane what's so, so funny though is if you think about it like when i was in lioness and the dragon's den video was out it's the same thing probably with your content like they're probably watching your content and they're like oh my god this guy like he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about like he's just oh he, he needs to just like learn our model it's different we're doing better he oh, doesn't yeah. understand it our comp plan has changed totally different now he's a hater you know negativity <laughs> negativity sells more you know you see the news they never say yeah. anything good it's all bad so he's just doing this for clicks for his youtube channel and it's like they have you, all of them bro if you apply that thinking to anything else like there was that really popular Epstein documentary on you on uh, Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never heard anybody say that the creator of that documentary yeah. was a loser because he was just trying to get <laughs> money off it. And I'm sure he did get money off it. If you have for a sure. documentary on Netflix, I'm sure you made some money off that, right? You didn't yeah. do it for free. But I never hear people say stuff about other types of like journalism or activism. I only hear it when it comes to scammers trying to defend their scam basically <laughs> oh he's negative he's a hater so it why am i not being a hater towards everybody that has more money than me lots yeah. of people have more money than me how come i'm not making videos about like rappers yeah. that have more money than me or any like i don't hate uh you know whatever billionaire because they have more money than me yeah it doesn't make any it's sense it's, it's it's so easy to objectively look back. Like even now, I've been out of MLMs for 10 years and I look back to like 10 or 12 years ago and objectively I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? But when you're in that environment with that community and that like cult of people and the training and the woo woo and like everyone's together, man, it's dude, it's crazy. It's, it is a fucking cult, dude. Yes. You know, I've never been and, and maybe I've never been in any, any kind of like commune or anything like that. Maybe those like like who's the the Kool Aid Man? What's what's the Kool Aid Man again? I can't remember. The oh, guy Jim Jones. Ever, Jim Jones. You know, maybe Jim Jones was like on another level, like even past MLMs. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. But like MLMs, thinking back on them, I'm just like, how did I miss all of these signs, all of these red flags that I just skated right by? And I was like, nope. It's like the Dragon's Den episode with Lioness, like. Every single person I went to is like, dude, this is a pyramid scheme. Like this is, and I'm like, no, dude, you just, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. Like, just let me sit down and explain it to you. Like, I'm much smarter. Like, tell, listen, I'll bring my upline in. Like, he'll explain. He, 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 listen, he explains it better than I do. I'll bring him in. Like, you know what I mean? But like, now I'm like, what, like, actually, how could I not see it? But it's so fucking difficult when you're in it, when you're in that moment. Yeah. And so did this tear up <laughs> your, you and your girlfriend's relationship, relationship? Cause you both got in it, right? No, no, okay. no. I, I, I like we broke up. Um, probably like, yeah, yeah. We broke up. It's like completely unrelated okay, to okay. any MLM thing. Um, but yeah, we never like again. Like I've never even thought about. It. I haven't really thought about it since I started watching your channel like a couple years ago. So it, it was kind of just like another thing. Like oh, it's just like honestly, you know, in the back of my mind, it was just like oh, I didn't work hard enough, and like you know, I I got to take accountability for my actions. You know, I lost seven grand, but you know what? It was a good learning experience, and I learned about this. <laughs> and that's what you rationalize it with right you have to rationalize it with something so that's what i did and then it was like it, yeah it has like literally been like 12 years since i started thinking about it and then i'm like wait a second this is obviously like set against me there was no yes. way for me to win there's absolutely no way for me to win just like speaking so I, like i know i know like quite a few of the leaders in that company and the leaders in the new company and the leaders of like world financial group in primerica as well but even the like top dude in canada like the top dude in lioness is like gone from the industry and like i don't want to talk shit about him right but like does not make anywhere near what he made in the like it all came crumbling down for him as well so it's like it doesn't just affect the bottom line as it affects everyone when they change the comp plan when they change the structure of things like it, and when people leave it comes crashing down on everyone except for the owner it works out for him pretty well
Of course, yeah. yeah. Which, which I, I met that guy. Oh, yeah, what was his name? Hubert? Was that Hubert? the guy that was on Shark Tank or Dragon's Den? No, no, that okay, was that just was some, a, like... Just a random. That was no. crazy. Okay, no. um, you mentioned before how... <clears throat> In your mind, it was like you didn't work hard enough. You got to take accountability, whatever. Yeah. I have heard MLM recruiters take that sentiment so far to absolve themselves of any sort of guilt or wrongdoing. Like, I remember I did a debate with this Primerica guy that's on my channel, and he is the, a firm believer that nobody ever loses money in Primerica. As a matter of fact, it's impossible to lose money because, worst case scenario, you got something out of it. If you join an MLM where you shampoo is the product, right? Worst case scenario, you got some great shampoo that you can use for yourself. Maybe you didn't bring anyone in. And he said to me something that in the moment sounded really clever. I realize now it's so easy to poke a hole in, but he's like, you know, Marco, you criticize the MLMs because they tell people they're going to make a million dollars and a lot of people don't. But is it a scam if I go to the movie theater and I don't like the movie? Because every movie says they're the number one movie in Blockbuster and it's such a great movie. So does that mean that those are scams. And I'm like, the movie, <laughs> that's a risk that you take when you go to watch a movie. You might not like the yeah. movie. That's yeah. And you lost your $20 or whatever to see the movie. The movie was not a business opportunity that you were told you're going to make a million dollars off of and it cost you $3,500 to join. The yeah. comparison, it sounds so slick. It sounds reasonable in the moment. And if I, if it wasn't for my experience being able to think critically about what they say, I might be convinced by a charming, a charming fellow like that making that comparison. Oh, well, you know, that does kind of make sense. The movies do say that they're all good movies. And then sometimes I don't like the movie. And is that a scam? Like, but it, it's bullshit. It's, it's bullshit. The, the way that they can work in similarities and in comparisons to try and like draw up these two things that are like, oh, kind of similar. So if this is, you know, this is okay. So like, this is maybe okay as well. And it's it, like, dude, it's mental gymnastics. And if you're like, especially if you're like, if you're young, if you're vulnerable, like now, I mean, I don't even entertain those. So like, I, I mean, I, I think I told you this before we started, but I've been in the insurance industry for 10 years. I get a shitload of people that like co like comment and, you know, reach me out on YouTube and like DM me on, on Facebook being like, hey, man, I see what you're doing in the insurance industry. I'd love to have a chat and, you know, sit about an opportunity. I'm like, I don't even give them the fucking time of day. I'm like, get, dude, get lost, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I have zero time for you. But with that being said, dude, I'm 33 years old now. I've been in the industry for 10 years. I have experience under me. But when you're like a young vulnerable person like i was in my 20s and you start to hear these comparisons and these similarities you're like yeah that's fuck that's true marco yeah that's right man yeah it's like the movies and yeah i didn't like godzilla that much like it wasn't as good as the first one you know what i mean it's so easy to fall for these things dude and i i give zero blame to anyone that's ever it, like including myself that's fallen for any mlm because they honestly out of all of the cults that exist out there in the world they are one of the best they're so good at what they do which is just promising a dream getting you to sign up and taking your money and literally brainwashing you to continue to do that over and over again and then try and bring your friends in to do the same thing it's wild dude it's wild to think yeah. about yeah that's a great point and you know i've heard them say other clever stuff where they're like this is one of the most clever like comparisons false comparisons they make they'll yeah. go well, you know, Marco, you describe all of these red flags of a pyramid scheme. And, you know, I can think of a lot of different companies that have yeah. similar things. For example, you know, if I was to tell you, you know, a cat and a dog both have four <laughs> legs and a tail and two ears, but they're very different. You know, they have similarities, but they're very different. So when you talk about recruiting and whatever, well, you know, the military oh, recruits people yeah. and real estate oh, and yeah. realtors recruit people. And it's like, oh, my God, you guys are so fucking slick <clears throat> with the way you say shit. But. It means you know, nothing. It means nothing. It's just babble. Like, um, show me one other business in the world that has to rely on so many comparisons to get their point across. Also, show me another industry where people who are employees of it or members of it or, <laughs> yeah. you know, who aren't even making money go yeah. to war on social yeah. media for these yeah. companies. Like if I worked at Apple and there was a guy who made videos and got millions of views talking shit about Apple and how much he hates Apple. Yeah. Do you really think I would be dedicating my time 
to go and argue with this guy and like try to get yeah. his Instagram <laughs> taken down and report his video because he didn't no, like dude. Apple. No, most people who work a job, they look at it as exactly that. It's a job. It's yeah. just a way to make a living. It's yeah. not permanent. No. And if they lose that job tomorrow or something like COVID happens, they're going to go find a new job. This is just a way of life. The thing that makes MLMs such a, an obvious cult is the way people fight for it. Like it's not just Crazy. their job. Like even if you made good money, let's say you were a manager at an Apple store, you made good money, right? Sure. Or you worked at Apple corporate and you made good money. You would not be trying care. to fight for Apple the way these people fight for world financial group. It's so it's true, ridiculous. dude. Ridiculous. Nobody and, cares. You know, I think it's just so understated. Like people know about Scientology now. You know, there's been documentaries about Scientology. Scientology in 2007 claimed that they had 3.5 million members in the States. Um, wow. It's it's not that high. They're crushing uh, it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like it's like less than 100,000, I'm pretty sure, globally. Yeah. Less than 100,000 people. If you compare this to how many people are in MLM or how many people have been approached by MLM yeah. or how many people <laughs> used to be in one or have a friend or family member that used to be in one or is in one, it's yeah. virtually every person. Like the MLM industry is bigger than the movie industry. Think about that for a second. Yeah. When Spider-Man No Way Home came out, everybody saw Spider-Man. That movie made like over a billion dollars, right? And not just the one movie, every movie in yeah. the United States and yep. Canada, every year, all the people who went <clears throat> to see a movie, that's still less than the amount of money made by MLM every yep. year. It affects virtually every single person. I've never talked to a person who didn't know what I was talking about when I told them what I do, who didn't at least go, oh, yeah, uh, my friend was in that or my friend tried to get me in that or I used to be in that. Yep. Everybody has some varying yep. degree of experience with MLM. It, it's like the most widespread scam. Like for yep. comparison, not everybody has had an experience with someone who was like a criminal. Yep. But everybody has had experience with MLM. Yeah. And those people, you know, the people who are high up in those companies, in MLM companies, it's my personal belief that they are professional criminals. This is legal crime. You look at the backgrounds of a lot of these people and you find out that they had a history of illegal activity prior to. It's the perfect place for yeah. someone who is a existing or burgeoning <clears throat> sociopath or psychopath because you can scam people in broad daylight and nothing bad will happen to you. You know, I'm very careful to call people scammers. I believe most people in MLM are victims. If you were in it and you had 10, even 10 people under you, which would be a lot, if one leaves from one year to the next or half of them leave or all of them leave, that's just 10 people. So you maybe, you maybe are still just brainwashed. You can't see the full scope of the damage. Yeah. But if you're one of the people who is so high up in a company and you're able to see with your own eyes that from <clears throat> January 1st of year one to January 1st of year two, maybe you started with 100,000 people. And at the start of year two, that 100,000 people, half of them have been replaced by a new, like 50,000 of them have left, new, a new 50,000 have joined. And now on year two, you have still 100,000 people, but half of them are brand new. If you are so high up that you can see that level of attrition, people leaving and because they lost money and new people joining, you know that what you're pushing is a scam. And it's very rare that someone who's that high up in a company is going to be convinced by, well, you know, a lot of people join uh, the gym on January 1st and they don't, <laughs> they don't stay consistent with it. So, you know, 50% of marriages fail. And again, with the false yeah. equivalences, right? But I think if you're high up enough in a company that you're able to see people leaving and being upset by the fact that they lost money and they were misled and then a new batch of people joining – if you're able to see that at such a high magnitude, you know what you're doing. My yeah, opinion, you yeah. know what you're doing. Dude, yeah, that's such a good point that you bring up. I've often wondered that myself quite a bit is like, like, do, are they ignorant? Like, are they just ignorant to it? Like, do they just choose not to see it? Are they just making so much money that it just doesn't affect them? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not sure. I actually don't know. Um you know how they operate like on a day-to-day -day basis i'm not sure and it's like i've pondered it like quite a bit and so like one of the things 
I mentioned that I, I got started in the insurance industry like 10 years ago. And one of the ways that I got started was as an independent, meaning that I got like a full override. So like the, the basically the most amount of commission that you can get. Okay. And the guy that helped me set this up, he was like, okay, here you go. Here's like your max commission level. And I was like, oh, sweet. So like, then you could like, I could bring on like maybe some other agents and I could like train them and I could build like a brokerage in myself and then maybe just do like a lower percentage. And he's like, well, yeah, you could do that. But then what's going to happen when they find out that you're making all this money? Like, why wouldn't you just show them that? Right? Like, why would you ever start them at a lower percentage? Why why wouldn't you just show them like, hey, here's you can make unlimited money, like 100% of the commission. Why would you do this split, right? So you might train them for a little bit, but then all of a sudden they're going to get in and they're going to be like, well, this is stupid. You're making all this. Why wouldn't I just do what you're doing? And I thought about that. And this was probably one of the best things that anyone has told me because I thought about it at the time. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Why would I ever give an opportunity to somebody else that's less than the opportunity that I have? Like, that doesn't make any sense. How could I sleep at night, right? If I know that I'm making 100%, and this other guy's making 50%. How am I going to sleep at night knowing that he could also just have 100% himself? Mm -hmm. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. And so, like, from that moment on, and I think I told you this before our call started, I don't have, like, there's no one in my insurance business, right? It's just myself, right? And I handle all the volume that comes in. I've never recruited anyone. I've never brought anyone in. And if I do have someone that reaches out, like, hey, man, like, do you have anyone that, like, works with your company? Like, can I come on board? I'm like, no, you can't come on board with my company, but I can set you up with exactly the same contract that I get, and you can get max level commission just like I get max level commission, and you don't need to split anything. Like, right. there's no point. And I can sleep well at night knowing that I've structured it that way. Like, I know that I've built my business, and I've never ripped anyone off. Right. I can sleep comfortably knowing that. But, like, I think about these guys that you have to know at some level. They know what they're doing. Like, they're aware of how many people are coming in and like a good guy to bring up here, which I followed for years and I actually respected quite well in the business. I don't know if you know him, but his name is Patrick Bet David. He owns PHP. Yes. And I, I followed him for years and years and years. And I respected the fuck out of him, man. I watched all his videos and then I learned, oh, he's got an insurance business. That's great. I have an insurance business. That's awesome. And then I was like, what's his insurance business? PHP. What's yeah. that? And then I started to dig and I was like, dude, you know what's going on. And I just lost so much respect for him because I'm like, there's no, you're a very intelligent person. And keep in mind, he sold his company for nine figures. So like, he doesn't give a fuck, dude. Right. He got out right as the heat was starting to come down. Like I remember yeah. last year, CoffeeZilla got him on a call and started grilling him about no, PHP. Really? And, yeah. There's a video on uh, CoffeeZilla's channel. Oh, I've never and, seen that. I'll, yeah. I'll later that, later that year is when he sold PHP. I think... Just to talk about Patrick for a second, Patrick, but David, not only does he remind me so much of my dad, just yeah. in the way he's like, first of all, he looks like, kind of like my dad, yeah. but, you know, first of all, but secondly, just the way he talks, he is so charming. He is so charismatic. He is such a good salesman. And you know what? I'll give it up to him. I yeah. like Patrick, but David's videos. Yeah. He is an yeah. incredible interviewer, great yeah. talker. He has some of the best interviews most interesting interviews with people ever and he yep. is so like <clears throat> just everything he he do, he did it in my opinion the transition from mlm guru scammer to just being a sort of social media inspirational tony robbins type figure he did that transition better oh, than man. anybody yeah. in my opinion he yeah. has made it through with reap, while reaping all the rewards and benefits of being an MLM like scammer essentially yep. with the least amount of resistance and the least amount totally. of criticism. Like he, I got to give it up to him, yeah. but, <laughs> and that's where, that's where the I'm conflicted too is because totally I man, I genuinely like a lot of his videos. Like I'll still watch some of his videos, but I know in my heart that this guy is a person who took advantage of the MLM business model. He knows he yeah. knows it's bad. He knows he has to. He has to. He has and he started, to. Fun, funny he has fact to. about uh, funny fact about Patrick. He started with World Financial Group. Oh, I didn't know that. No, that's way. where he got the concept for PHP. Wow. It's just wow. World Financial Group uh, copy paste. No way. Really? Same thing that's... with Primerica. I mean, they're all the same. But yeah, um, that's like I don't know if you know Great Way Financial as well. Yep. Yeah, but they're they're also X W F G, and they're probably in mm -hmm. the hottest of water right now. Out of all the MLMs that were investigated from the the FSRO or whatever, mm. Federal Regulatory Service of Ontario, yes. they're in the hottest water. So I remember on like one of the sales presentations that they had, like literally this is like corporate documents, they would like 
um, black out where it said insurance because they're like, don't talk about it as insurance. Just talk about it as an investment. Yeah. I've, I've heard that too because <laughs> they, they call it the I word in these companies. Yeah. Don't tell people about insurance because <laughs> if you talk about insurance, then they think you're going to try to sell them something and people don't want to buy something. You need to oh incentivize them to want it because you need to appeal to what all people want. What yep. do people want? Freedom. Yeah. Time freedom, financial freedom. So start talking about that. Don't talk about insurance. Insurance <laughs> is the way we're going to get to that. It's such Shut a clever con. Exactly. It, it's yeah, it's a con. And yep. what you talked about um, before you mentioned Patrick, but David, you talked about how it's just you and your business. Because yeah. why would you, you know, get you mentioned, why would you uh, pitch somebody something where they're going to make 50% commission when you're making 100, to whatever? Totally. You're pointing out one of the most obvious things that are nonsense in MLM, which is why would you recruit someone to steal market share from you in a certain territory? Totally. If you're, if your goal is to make sales. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm selling Girl Scout cookies and I'm in my neighborhood and I want to sell Girl Scout cookies to everybody in my neighborhood, why yeah. would I recruit my next door neighbor who's going to go hit half of the houses before me and sell the Girl Scout cookies? Wouldn't I want to keep that for me? Yep. So the idea that these people, I mean, think about just me as a customer, right? I have insurance for my car, for my house, for my health. I've bought insurance a couple times in my life. I sign up with uh, a company and it's just, it renews. Yeah. The idea, and by the way, my insurance that I'm with, it's all online. I, I've never even talked to a person from this yeah, company. 100%. It's all online and yeah. it renews automatically each yep. year. The idea that there would need to be even 10,000 insurance salespeople in my city of 1 million people is absurd. And the and then further, the idea that those 10,000 would go and recruit 50,000? <laughs> like the need Dude, is not even crazy. there. It's so, it's so anti-business, anti-supply and demand. Yeah. E economics 101. Yeah. To me, that's an obvious sign that it's a fucking scam. But, yeah. you know... Honestly, honestly, though, between between you and me, and I guess this video is live, so everyone's watching the video as well. Sure. I they they do an awesome job for me. I I respect. Well, I don't respect them. Sorry, but I appreciate every World Financial Group, every Primerica, every Xperia person because you know what they do. They go out and they hammer like door to door sales or door door to door marketing. They go to their family. They go to their friends. They go to the grocery store. All that shit that I don't do in my business. And so they go and pitch all these people. These and they pitch them like in like shitty products, bad products, right? In, incorrectly sold. And then these customers, these people are like, well, wait a second, how does that actually work? And then those people go on YouTube and search up how does it work and then find my video and then find my channel and then buy it from me eventually. So I appreciate all of them. Because they're basically like a huge sales force that's just out there selling bad policies. And those people are looking for answers and they find it in, in, on, on my channel and other places as well. So, Right. But it could also be a bad thing. Like it gives all insurance people a bad name as well because, you know, yeah. people don't – people – the general public doesn't know the intricacies of term life insurance, indexed universal life insurance. They don't know what these things mean. So they might just associate insurance sales guy with bad because of their experience with – uh, it's definitely, it's definitely like that, that last little part, I'm, I'm, you know, 50% serious is a little bit of a joke. It's definitely yeah. an overall negative for the insurance industry for sure. Uh, you know, and it's, it's almost like it, like it is a bad word, right? Like when people ask me what I do and like, I mean, again, I've been in this industry for 10, 10 plus years now. I'm, you know, quite successful in what I'm doing right now. And still to this day, when people ask me what I do, I get that like twinge. In yeah, my body yeah, right yeah. i'm like oh god are they i'm i do this thing and uh <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, because yeah. i know that as soon as i say like hey i'm in insurance they're like oh are you with world financial group? i'm like no no i'm not with world financial group and like they think i'm gonna want to recruit them right, right. so yeah 100 percent. like overall it's a huge negative um for yeah. for the industry not only um with like the heavy recruitment model so now you're associating insurance with recruiting and mlms but also the vast number of improperly sold products because like, dude, here's the thing, man, like these products are not simple. Okay. Like these are complicated right. products that I would love to get on a call with any WFG or Primerica or Xperia or any <laughs> of these motherfuckers and be like, explain to me actually how this works. Right. They wouldn't and know. They, they can't know. They've been in the industry for six to 12 months, dude. Like 90% of advisors fail within the first year. So like, think about that, man. You have these guys running around selling 
products. They don't understand how they work. They're just blindly trusting their upline. And they're just, yeah, this is good for everyone. Everyone needs a universal life insurance policy. No, everyone does not need that, right? So what you get is, I mean, and I've dealt with this a lot in my business. Like I've met a lot of clients that had WFG policies that they bought 20, 30 years ago. And the advisor's long gone out of the industry. Everyone's made their money. The uplines made their money. He made their money. And this policy, it's crap, dude. It's like, you have to cancel it. It's like this guy spent like, you know, 20 grand or 10 grand for the last 20 years. And now they need to just cancel it because it's shit. It was improperly sold, didn't make enough money. Now it's going to collapse. It's YRT. And so it's just garbage, right? And this is not like, like if you ask any serious independent insurance brokers, and there are a, you know, a number of us out there, and there's a couple different groups on Facebook, you can go and find like real insurance advisors. If you ask any of them, all of these MLMs are a joke. And they all have stories of like, yeah, I met this client and they did this terrible thing. Yeah, I met this other client and WFG did this. And like, it always goes back. So yeah, like overall, it's a huge negative for our business. And like, yeah, I mean, what's the alternative? Like, I don't, I'm not sure. I mean, it, I mean, it'd be great if they all just either A, right, right. left or B, went independent or did something else. Like they would have to do massive reform at these companies. And like, we actually, then now we're specifically talking about insurance, but obviously I'm a little bit more versed in that. Well, we made a post out the other day on the Life Insurance Canada page, which is like a group of independent advisors. And the question was like, what would you want to have changed in the industry? And like a couple of things right off the bat was like, and this is what everyone said, like, um, number one, you can't bring anyone into the business unless you've been in the business for two years. That was one of them. Um, number two was a separate license for permanent life insurance. So if you wanted to sell like a universal life or like an investment, quote unquote, you had to go and get a completely separate license that was a lot more rigorous. Um, that was a big one. There was one more. I can't remember what it was, but like the overall get sentiment, rid of MLM. Yeah, the overall sentiment. Yeah, not recruiting for two years was a big one. There was one more. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, the overall sentiment like of brokers is like, no, this is a negative for our industry. Like it's right. it, it's bringing it down as a whole. You mentioned something too in your reasoning why you don't recruit people about keeping the playing field level, right? Why would you offer somebody an opportunity where they are going to earn less than you? Yeah, that's another reason why I say this industry is so appealing to sociopaths or psychopaths, because if you don't have any empathy, if you don't give a shit about what happens to other people, it doesn't bother you at all to recruit someone knowing they're eligible to make zero dollars, but recruiting them is going to help you make more money. Yeah, they'll tell you in MLMs, they'll say it's not a scam, because everybody has the same chance to grow if you if you join the company under me you can actually pass me so it's it's actually even more fair than a corporate structure where yeah. if you join as a janitor you'll never become the ceo again this is an example of something that sounds very suave very reasonable but yeah. the truth is unless you are willing to deceive people in mass in mlm you will not grow and also who's to say that the janitor couldn't become the ceo it's not likely but it could happen. It's not a 99.6% yeah. annual chance that you're going to lose money. And guess what? That janitor, he gets paid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's this very hot MLM phrase that goes, documentation stops the conversation or documentation over conversation, any variation of this, okay. right? Which yeah. means any questions that people have, any doubts should be shut up by you showing the results that you make money. But Showing that you make money doesn't prove that it's not a scam. Yeah. Scam, the purpose of a scam is for yep. people to make money. Yeah. Imagine if a child trafficker came up to me and said, oh, you know, you have all these negative thoughts about what I do in my business, but look how much money I make. It's like the fact that you make <laughs> money doesn't prove that it's not <laughs> shitty what you're doing. Yeah, 100%. You know? 100%. There are so many things, legal or illegal, that are immoral that make money. Dirty politicians operate within a legal framework and they make money. Yep. Lobbying for yep. corporate interests, I would say, is not ethical or moral. Yeah. But people still do it. It's still legal. They make money. Does that mean that I should go, oh, you know what? You made money. So, yeah, I was wrong. It's not a scam. No, showing me that you make money proves that you're yep. one of the people profiting off the scam. I've watched more, more than most people who are have ever joined Primerica or World Financial Group or whatever MLM, I have spent more time watching trainings mm -hmm. from people in WFG or Primerica than most people who ever even joined the company. And yeah. I actually I actually am probably more experienced 
in terms of being a World Financial Group agent than people who actually were World Financial Group agents. Probably. Because I go and watch trainings from this guy, that guy, that guy, all over the place, not just one base shop or office. So I have a ton of experience about what goes on in these presentations, these Zoom meetings. And you know what? I've said, I said this in my uh, speech at the conference I gave recently. There has never been more than five minutes, and that's generous, where the recruiter, the presenter talked about the actual product, yep. talked about insurance, yep. talked about selling. <clears throat> you know what it was about? Your mindset. People who yeah. are haters, recruiting yeah. more people, building your list, building your pitch, social media flexing. That's what it's about. 100%. It's a, it, again, bringing it back to something you said much earlier, it's a cult. Yeah. It's a commercial yep. cult. There's religious cults. Scientology yep. would be an example of that. And yep. there's commercial cults. There's there's other kinds of cults too. There's political cults. There's commercial cults. MLM is a commercial cult. It's a if a religious cult uses the Bible as their thing that they're using to convince people, then commercial cults are using the Wolf of Wall Street. You know, that's what that's <laughs> totally. a movie. You know, that's yeah. their that's it's, their Bible. It's built it's, it's built on dreams and promises and and you can make this much and you can be exactly like this person. But no, you can't. Exactly. By, in order for you to win, others must fail. Absolutely. That's yes. the only way. That's the only way for that's you. That's true. Win. I have a video. If you've made it this far in the video, I highly recommend you go and watch. There's a video on my channel called Why Making Money in an MLM is Impossible. And I show using just simple math how in order for you to make money in an MLM, other people have to lose. Yep. Yep. And and it's it's not just some, it's the vast majority. And yep. I know the MLM response to that sentence. If they just took that one sentence, they would say, well, if you went and bought a hamburger at a restaurant, uh, you gave them your money and you got the hamburger. <laughs> technically, you lost money. So technically, you had to lose. Again, it's just – it's just uh, it's absurd, dude. It's they're absurd. They're just changing the it's definition absurd. of what yeah, it means to lose money. Yeah. Spending money yeah. does not mean losing money. Yeah. Losing yeah. money is when you're told you're going to make a bunch of money yeah. and it costs you an investment and then you never actually got anything back. Yeah. What what oh. what I what I love in the like insurance MLMs like like Primerica or WFG and they're like, well, you don't have to recruit, right? You can you can just produce, sure. like you can just go sell it. It's like, well, if you just want to produce, why would you ever work for World Financial Group or Primerica or XP or any of those groups? Why wouldn't you just like go do what I do and just become an independent broker and get twice the commission? Yeah. Like, why would yeah. you ever produce in any of those MLMs and give away half or three quarters even in some like Primerica is bad. Yes. America is the I think the worst. They give like twenty five percent of their commission, which keep in mind is probably like eighteen percent of my commission. And like like I'm not I'm not special. Like anyone can go out and do the same thing that I did and become an independent broker. Like you don't. Yes. It's, it's there's no special thing that you need. You just go and talk to an MGA and they set you up. It's super easy, and then you become an independent. You're on your way. Well, you so, you can attest to this being that you are an independent broker is. When you go to sell life insurance, when you get licensed to sell life insurance, generally the policy issuer is willing to pay the salesperson 90% or 100% of the first year. Yeah. Uh, what's the what's the term? Like, um, like, like premium. 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 They'll yeah. pay you a commission of 100%. So if you sold a life insurance policy that costs $1,000, the company, the policy issuer will give you the salesperson – the full one thousand dollars because they're gonna make their money yeah. on the renewals on the subsequent years. It's, right? it's it's even more than that. Okay, sometimes it can be more than a hundred, but yeah. I'm being conservative. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm being conservative. Yeah, for, sure, for sure. If for you sure. join Primerica, your elig your starting eligibility when you have zero people under you, if you sell a one thousand dollar <laughs> policy, is twenty five percent. It's crazy. Twenty five percent. So think about that. In order for you to get to unlock more commission in Primerica, you have you have to, to exactly. recruit people. But you could go become an independent salesperson, independent insurance broker, and from jump without having to recruit anybody, get a hundred percent. Yep. Think about that. Yeah. If you if you were such a and by the way, <laughs> yeah. a lot of the people are, who are being recruited are 18, 19, 20 years old. If you at 19 years old are such a skilled salesperson Dude. that you can go and sell, let's say, two insurance policies a month and make two grand a month in commissions. Yeah. Why on earth would you not <laughs> just be an independent broker? Why would you go sell for Primerica? Let's say you went to Primerica, you join, boom, you get that 25% commission. You don't have to recruit. And you sold $2,000 worth of policies and you only got 25%. That's $500, $600. Yeah. 
So yep. you sold two thousand dollars worth of something, and you only got five hundred dollars in commission. It's impossible. That is so bad. It's if you're terrible, such a good dude. salesman that you can sell two thousand dollars worth of anything, I would hope to God you're earning more than five hundred dollars in commission. Yep. Yep. I dude. could go start a lemonade stand, and if I was able to sell uh, two thousand dollars worth of lemonade in a month, best believe my profit margin is not just going to be five hundred dollars. And they don't make it. They don't. I'm, I they was going to say. I was going to say. You know, I don't know how they make it, but it, the reality is, is they don't make it, right? I mean, they sell a few. Pol and they, that's really all it is. It's just this tumultuous cycle where they, you know, come in like the, your uplines. They recruit. They saturate the warm market. They sell to their family and friends. They leave the business. Do it again. Recruit. Sell. Sell to the warm market. Recruit. So it's just like this. That's that of is course. their marketing plan. Primerica, WFG, all these companies. They don't have a marketing plan. Like they don't run ads. They don't have a YouTube channel. They don't have faith. They're not doing content marketing. And any content marketing they're doing is to get advisors to come on board and recruit more. Like that's their content marketing. Their marketing plan is how can I sell shitty products to your worm market and then get you out of this as fast as possible? Because we don't care about you anymore. Right. Like, well, sure, if you want to recruit some more people, great. But we just want to sell to your worm market and get you out. Well, their rebuttal to what you just said would be that, you know, we don't waste millions of dollars on advertising. We let our we, we give that money back to our to our agents so that they can get that money because we care about our agents. Obviously, yeah. it's bullshit if you actually yeah. look at the numbers, but that's yeah. what they would that's what they would say to you in that thing. But you're hundred percent spot on. And mind you, these are sales that don't get made despite them saying that everybody needs this. With my lemonade analogy, people don't need lemonade. Yeah. And I I would still yield more of a return if I sold ten dollars worth of lemonade yep. than they would if they sold ten ten dollars worth of yep. lotions and potions or insurance. Yeah, and I mean that's why I say it's a Ponzi scheme with extra steps. The product only exists so that legally they can say, "Well, you bought something. You didn't yeah. just give me money for nothing." <laughs> but I think the the most clever MLMs specifically choose products to sell that they can say everybody needs like insurance. Yeah. Well, everybody yeah. needs insurance, but you know what? The shampoo MLMs will, will claim that your hair never stops growing. So you always need to take <laughs> care of your hair. Give me any MLM product. And I could tell you the exact pitch that they would say for why everybody <laughs> needs this. I promise you, I promise you I could. So um, I love it, dude. I love it. I'm dude. really, I, I really am happy that, you know, I'm not happy that you lost money, but I'm happy that you have a grasp on what this industry is. Yeah. I say industry loosely because it's not an industry. It's not a business. Industries no. industries care about selling things to people and solving some need. Yeah. These well, they not... do sell things to people. It's just selling people, selling the recruits. That's what you're selling do. a dream. Yeah. yeah so, but that's exactly. not really a business. It's a scam. No. So no. so that's why I say industry in quotation marks. But I'm glad that you recognize what it is. I'm glad that you are using your powers for good and not running a an insurance business that is modeled after an endless chain of recruiting yeah you just do it by yourself and uh you know i hope this video is helpful for people to understand why you're not a business owner an entrepreneur a salesperson an insurance whatever in wfg or primerica you may have gotten licensed yeah but you could use that license and go make sales and earn a hundred percent commission exactly why are you why are you using that license to only make 25% commission and also yep. have the burden of recruiting your friends yep. and family. Yeah. Yeah. And and honestly, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but like if anyone in WFG or Primerica or Xperia or any other group um, like just wants more information, I will point you in the right direction. There's a bunch of you know, just look up MGAs in Canada um, and they're super helpful. They help you get set up with contracts. They help you with training um they're just they're the little conglomerates and they get you contracts with different carriers and you get full commission they're like yep. you can and I, I i take nothing there's nothing there's no compensation that i get from this i will just point you in the right direction and so if you actually want to sell and not recruit that's the way to do it dope okay well i'll link your youtube channel affinity life in the description and you have videos about insurance. People can go check it out. And not, <laughs> Riveting stuff. Yeah, not not being a recruiter. <laughs> if if you're interested, I know that's a niche all on its own. But yeah, for sure. Yeah, but Philip, I really appreciate you uh, sharing your story. I know we didn't even really get into the second company that you were with. Uh, yeah, I I have no experience with that company. <laughs> I had never even heard of it until you said. I don't know if it's around anymore. But no, I think they are. Okay, but what well, I think we we covered the the most for important sure. stuff. So for sure. Okay, well, I appreciate it. Thank you for doing this. Right on, man.